The Brave browser, definitely one of the more popular Chromium based browsers out there, but is it worth the hype? With Brave claiming to be the browser that puts you first, how does this stack up in 2025? Well in this video, I'll be exploring just that, right from their downloading, their setup, the UI, the core features available, as well as figuring out whether this browser is even worth it compared to the countless other options out there these days. Anyway, without further delay, let's begin. Chapters below. Oh actually, just a quick note, I'll discuss the general UI to start with, so if you're already familiar with the Brave interface and the controls, then skip to this time code to get to the core features of the browser, the downloading experience. Heading over to the Brave website, there's a few common themes you'll notice. Up front and center is the bold statement mentioning that Brave is the browser that puts you first, interesting for sure. Though the key theme that you'll notice as you scroll through the website is the fact that Brave places massive emphasis on privacy, security, blocking trackers and ads, all whilst offering the performance and features you'd expect from a modern browser in 2025. I mean Brave is that confident in their product that they even list these dedicated comparisons between competing popular browsers which is really something you don't see every day. And yes, Brave might be cherry picking with some of these comparisons, but to include them at all does say something as well. A little brave of them I think for sure. Anyway, downloading Brave, you'll notice that it's available across all major platforms, including mobile devices and Linux. Downloading the app and running it, you can also tell that it shares its roots with that of Chrome based on the way that the setup looks when you go through that process. And on the topic of Chrome, I should mention, almost as a bit of a disclaimer really, that this browser is based based on the open source Chromium framework. So yes, while it shares its framework with Chrome, using Chromium still does mean a browser can be private and privacy respecting, as people often get confused between the two when it comes to the implementation of Chromium. Just thought I'd get that out of the way, based on other browser videos I've done and comments that I've received on them. Anyway, on with the video. Initial impressions. Once installed, you'll be greeted to the following setup screen. Progressing through the steps, you have an option to import your settings, as well as being able to participate in making the Brave browser better, if you so choose. And after that, that's it. I was a bit surprised initially, as I was expecting a bit more setup in regards to the appearance, tab layout, and that sort of thing, but it seems that Brave have definitely favoured a do-it-yourself kind of approach. One critique that I would give in regards to the setup process is the fact that Brave has its own analytics options, like I just showed as part of the setup, which, based on the minimal approach that Brave has taken, seems to be the only setup for the browser. And for a browser claiming to be so focused on blocking ads and trackers, having this be one of the first things that a new user sees is a bit hypocritical if you ask me personally. The new tab page. Anyway, you start on the new tab page when you launch the browser, which is definitely interesting, as on screen is the number of trackers and ads blocked, bandwidth saved, and time saved counters in the corner of the screen. This definitely runs home the theme of privacy and ad blocking for sure. On the right hand side, you have this multi widget panel allowing you to start a private video call, which is a bit strange of a feature, but I'll take it. Use your Brave VPN if you subscribe to that, as well as being able to manage your rewards and being able to earn tokens, both of which we'll discuss at a later point in the video. Moving into the top right, and clicking on the settings icon, we have some customization options, which I'll cover in just a moment. And right in the center, we have a search bar, which can be tailored to the search engine you prefer, or if you're feeling extra adventurous, you can choose to send your query to Leo, which is the built-in AI chatbot for the Brave browser. Again, I'll touch upon Leo at a later chapter in the video. Scrolling on the new tab page will reveal news articles based on Brave News, if you enable this within the settings, which apparently provides us with a private and anonymized feed, so there is that. I definitely like the implementation of this, where articles and news stays out of sight for the most part until you decide to scroll and bring them into focus. Unlike other browsers where right out the box news seems to be the main focus of the new tab page. And the final thing to mention is the selected photo. This seems to be different every time that you load a new tab page which seemingly is taken from a range of different places online. I'm not sure how Brave does this because as part of the sites it pulls images from some of them do seem to be private photography sites online from unlimited testing anyway. Now I haven't gone into the details on licensing and all that but one one photo source on a new tab page that was presented to me, the photo was literally taken from an Instagram profile. Either way, I digress. There's more customization in the upper right hand corner of the screen, which allows you to change the background image settings, adding various links directly to the page, news article feeds, a digital clock if you like, as well as various widgets for different features present in the browser. The browser top bar. Here you'll find the tab bar, the plus icon to create new tabs, and the X button to close them. Pretty standard. Not to mention, obviously all your keyboard shortcuts and other hidden tricks, like pressing the middle mouse button on a tab to close it works in Brave as well. Below that we have the back, forward and refresh buttons as standard and the bookmarks icon to bookmark your current page. Following that we have the URL bar which contains some site controls. To the right of that is the URL itself and to the right of that we have a few more icons. First is this onion icon which actually allows you to launch a site via the Tor browser network in a separate window all while staying within the realms of the Brave browser. Don't worry I'll cover this in more detail later on. And after that you have your standard share sheet so nothing too much to mention here. Following that you 
have your subscriptions manager button. Not something that many people will use, but if your subscription site supports it, you can manage them from within this icon. Moving past the split line, we have the Brave icon, which provides you with various insights into a site and the level of ad blocking and tracking that is occurring on the site. And next to that, we have Brave Rewards, which we'll touch upon in a bit. And finally, in the toolbar section, we have some controls. By default, you have the search icon and organize features to organize your tabs and respective information. The sidebar button, which as expected, brings up a sidebar which you can fill with various other information, such as the Leo AI assistant. Quickly get access to Brave Talk, Brave Wallet, bookmarks, and reading list, all while having your main content visible on screen. Next to the sidebar, we have a wallet icon, allowing you to gain access to the Brave Wallet functionality that's built into the browser. Following that is the dedicated Leo AI button, which pops out in the sidebar as we covered previously. It's a bit of a shortcut if you like. And after that, we have Brave VPN, which you can make use of if you subscribe to it. And finally, we have the classic three lines menu, providing us with a wealth of quick controls for our browser. If you've used another Chromium based browser before, then you'll feel right at home in here, as most of it is the same with a couple of extra toggles sprinkled in. And while the settings page does look familiar, yet different to the Chrome settings interface, I'll cover the settings portion of the browser towards the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. But in the meantime, let's wrap up with this section by looking at the different tab options that are presented in the browser. Because if you right click the tab bar, you get quite a few standard options that you'd find in Chrome. But one that stood out to me in particular was the item menu at the very bottom of the list, which states use vertical tabs. That's right, if you want to use vertical tabs in the Brave browser, you most certainly can, which definitely opens it up to the largest possible audience. Either way, you're presented with the usual controls you'd expect, like a collapsible button for your sidebar, auto hiding the sidebar if you like, resizing it as needed, as well as being able to reorder tabs as you like as well. Though, there doesn't seem to be a quick way to move the tab bar to the right side of the screen, so I can definitely see that being quite annoying for some, as I don't think it would be that hard to implement either. Not to mention, when you do choose the vertical tabs mode, you get this dead space at the top of your window, which is a bit annoying considering that other parts of the UI, like the URL bar and other icons, could also be moved up there if things were a bit more optimised. I think if you're looking for a vertical tab space browser, your best bet on Windows anyway is the Zen browser, for which I've already done quite a comprehensive review. Alright, with the tab bar and the basic UI out the way, let's move on to the key features that really make Brave stand out from its competition, and where better to start than with Shields. So you've probably got the general idea now that Brave focuses on privacy and ad blocking as its key features. Well, in order to achieve this, Brave uses something called Shields. Now, putting this simply, Brave Shields are a collection of different blocking controls, from blocking ads and tracking, scripts, fingerprinting, and even niche things like broken site reports, all of which can be customized and viewed further by clicking on the Brave icon in the URL, where you can simply toggle the level of blocking of different things on and off, or by going into the browser settings and then by going to the Shield section. Honestly, as far as built in ad blockers go, Brave definitely offers a very clean, minimal, and easy to use interface, and the visual aid of the Lion logo changing its color is definitely a nice functional touch. Tor browser integration. Oh, and how can I talk about privacy without touching upon private browsing mode? Well, Brave definitely takes that a step further too when compared with most other browsers out there. Not only do you get the standard ad blocking and privacy features in private browsing mode that we discussed already, but if you really want to take things to the next level, then there's actually an option to open a private browsing window with Tor. Yes, you heard me right, I said Tor. Now Tor is definitely beyond the scope of this video for sure, but essentially when you open a private browsing window, like in every other browser, your history, cookies and searches aren't saved on your computer, which is the point, but your internet provider, your network and the websites that you visit can still see what you're doing if you like. By using the special Tor browser however, which is usually a separate application, traditionally speaking, it adds another level of security as your connection goes to several random servers around the world in layers, hence the onion metaphor, resulting in it being much harder for websites and internet providers, or anyone for that matter, to track you. Not impossible, but much harder. And as you might have guessed by now, the private browsing window with Tor option provides you with this integration directly as a feature within the Brave browser. Though, as a quick heads up, using Tor is a bit slower than usual browsing due to the fact that there's a lot of behind the scenes work going on to keep you as anonymous as possible, so just be wary of that if you weren't already aware. Either way, if you're someone who needs or wants this type of functionality, you probably already know about this already. Oh, and like I pointed out earlier, you can quickly transfer a site to go through the Tor network by pressing this button in the URL. Brave search. Alright, and considering that this is a browser, that naturally takes us on to searching. Well, more importantly, Brave search. Yep, that's right. Along with the Brave browser, you get Brave's own search engine to use. Yeah, you can access the Brave search engine from other browsers, but with Brave, it's built in, and obviously the default choice right from the get-go. Either way, I find it provides solid results. But to be honest, personally, I don't think it stacks up to Google, which I know is to be expected, but it's just the basics I personally miss. For example, if I search for Apple in Google via Chrome and through Brave search in the Brave browser, you can see I lose out on the local map 
results right off the bat, and the shopping section on Google, for which Brave has no equivalent for. All of these things are core parts of the searching experience if you ask me. Either way, at least you have a privacy conscious option, built right into the browser if you like, so there is that. Leo AI. Though searching is only one part of the story, and I don't think it'd be right of me in 2025 to talk about this browser without mentioning Leo, Brave's built-in AI assistant. Now Leo can be accessed anywhere in the Brave browser, by simply clicking on this icon that you see in the top part of the browser. This opens a little side panel from which you can get your standard chatting interface, and if you're on a web page, that link is automatically attached to your chat, so Leo has something to reference if you decide to ask something that is related to the content on screen. Other than that, I'd say that it's pretty standard as far as chatbots go in the way that it works. You get the ability to pop Leo into a full page tab if you like, the ability to choose a different style of chatbot if you fancy, that could be based on speed, accuracy, etc etc, and even the ability to change the type of response that you're expecting. Either way, as you can imagine, the main advantage of it is that it's built into the browser directly, so yes, it's quite literally one click away at times. Though, if you want to get into the deep end of things, you can take a look and amend various settings related to Leo as you like from within the main settings. Brave Rewards and BAT. Now this might sound super gimmicky, and if you're anything like me, you might be wondering why such a thing even exists in a professional browser, but reading into it, it actually seems pretty interesting. The fundamental principle is that by enabling rewards, you see ads. Yep, you heard me right, but stick with me, because when you see these ads, which you opt into, you can earn BAT, short for Basic Attention Token. This way, not only do advertisers still have the option to reach out to Brave users, but it also allows you to support content creators and other web pages online, all while earning a little bit of the pie yourself, as these BAT can be converted into money, used to book flights online, and even into crypto, if that's your thing. All in all, if you don't mind seeing the odd ad here and there, then it's a bit of a win-win really, as not only do you get to earn from it, but it puts you in control, especially as you can customise the type of ads and ad format that you see, which is definitely something you really don't see every day. The only thing that I am a little bit sceptical of though, is the number of ads that you have to see in order to receive any sort of worthwhile payment, because looking online, this seems to be one of the main points of contention regarding the feature. Brave Wallet and Web3 And on the topic about earning fiat and cryptocurrencies, I think now is a good time to briefly touch upon the Brave Wallet and Web3. Now Brave Wallet is essentially a crypto wallet built into the browser, which traditionally would be something that you need extensions installed into your browser to provide functionality for, and this ties into Brave support for Web3, which follows in a similar fashion in the sense that it allows you to connect to decentralized apps, blockchain networks, and IPFS. Now I'm not going to pretend to you that I know what any of that means. Like I said regarding BAT and rewards, if you're interested or knowledgeable about this, then you probably already know about these Brave functionalities before watching the video. A quick note on extensions and performance. So as I mentioned towards the start of the video, Brave is based on Chromium, sharing the same open source foundation as that of Google Chrome, and thus has a few advantages going for it. One of the main ones is that you gain access to a large library of extensions, meaning that any extension that works on Google Chrome will also work on the Brave browser. Though, I would like to say that Brave is likely to perform better than Chrome, due to the fact that Brave blocks a lot of ads and other background processes, meaning that it doesn't have to load this stuff in, unlike Chrome. You get the idea. Customization in the settings and blocking controls. And finally, before we wrap up this video, I'd like to just point out and discuss various settings of the Brave browser that I thought were interesting or just worth taking a look at, because there are quite a lot of settings in here, and without accidentally clicking on a few buttons or getting to the right menu, most people would have no idea of the various hidden options available. So after sifting through them all, here's a concise list of things you should check out. Alright, so starting off and getting into the settings, you'll notice some icons along the top and then a bunch of menu items along the side of the screen. Starting with the controls at the top of the page, you might quickly think that these are sections in your settings considering that you did press settings to get to this screen, but in fact, they're just your browsing history list, your bookmarks, your download history, as well as your Brave wallet and rewards links conveniently listed out for you to have quick access to. Moving over to the three lines menu, we have the real list of settings. Starting off with the get started tab, you have options to continue where you left off, to the new tab page, or to open a specific page of your choosing, as well as the ability to change what your new tab page looks like, which we've already covered towards the start of the video. In the appearance section, again much of this is standard, you have the ability to change what key suggestions are shown in the URL bar, whether you want the URL bar to take up the remaining space if it's available, as well as what side the sidebar opens for things like the Leo Assistant. Some other toggles I'd also take a look at in here include showing full URLs, tab hover options, and the appearance of inactive tabs. Now on the content page, many users will really like the fact that you can change a universal font size inside of the application, as well as a font style that is used, and if that wasn't enough for you, then you even get the ability to change the zoom settings that Brave uses across every web page, right from this universal toggle. Moving over to Shields, you'll find various controls to affect this dedicated feature of the Brave browser. Most of these should be fairly typical, as far as ad blocking and trackers go, though I would say that you might want to turn on Forget Me When I Close This Site, in order to remove the cookies and 
and other stored data. Though, if you really want to take your privacy game to the next level, then click on content filtering and take a look through the content filters list. Honestly, it's got quite a comprehensive list of things in here that you can tell Brave to block from newsletter pop-ups to YouTube shorts and even specific dodgy sites. You get the idea. Moving on to privacy and security, there's not too much I'd like to elaborate on in here, primarily due to the numerous options present in here. But one thing that I did think that was interesting is the safety check option, which provides you with various help articles, the Brave version you're running, and if there's anything concerning that Brave thinks might need your attention. If so, you'll see it listed here. Web3 will skip over for the sake of this video, but in the Leo AI section, you have the ability to clear all data that Leo has gathered from your chats, as well as setting the default chatbot and style that gets used when you launch it. And if you're feeling extra savvy, you can always connect your own large language model to Brave. The Sync tab allows you to sync various devices via an account if you so choose. Use Brave on your phone or another computer for example, and in the search tab, you might want to turn off improved search suggestions, which is very well worded, implying almost that even if you use Brave search, that information will be sent back to Brave to improve its searching functionality. You can also go ahead and change it out completely if you like for another search engine of your choosing. And for the final few sections, we have autofill, where you might want to turn off autofill for private browsing windows, the download section, where you might want to change your location on your computer where downloaded files get saved to, and in the system section, you can change your shortcut keys, RAM management, and power management. Oh, and if you end up toggling a bunch of these things on and off after this video, you can always restore back to the defaults by pressing the reset settings option. The only annoying thing I'd say about the settings is that there's no universal search for some reason, unlike in Chrome. All right, what's my verdict then on this browser? Overall, if you're looking for an advanced privacy focused browser without going full on special agent with the likes of the dedicated Tor browser, then you won't find anything better I'd say. From the easy to use shield feature, Brave Rewards if you want to earn while optionally seeing ads, along with the Tor browser integration with your private browsing windows. Brave really does push privacy to the limit and lives up to the claims made on their website for sure. Not only this, but I also like the fact they have flexibility in the app, as well as features like Leo AI, vertical tabs if you really want that, and even stuff like Brave VPN, news and video calling with Brave Talk. And while I didn't touch too much on them in this video, Bat, Brave Wallet and Web3 related features are also present in the browser, showing how Brave is embracing future technologies even if they are in early stages of development. Though considering all this, would I switch to it? Well, I think there's a lot of features like Bat, Brave Wallet, Talk and VPN, which are things that I wouldn't actively use on a daily basis for my personal use case. So while it might be a good browser as a stopgap for now, out of the ones I've tested, I think something more minimal might suit me better in the long run. However, I really do appreciate that for the most part, Brave has done its best to integrate all these features without being too obtrusive about it. So if you don't want to touch half the features covered in this video and just want to use it normally, you most certainly can and won't be having a negative overall experience if you decide to. But that's just me. Many of these features I can see being genuinely useful to many people out there. So if that's you, then be sure to drop a like. But Brave is only one browser out of many out there. So why not check out this playlist on various browsers I've already covered? Or if you're done with browsers, why not head over to this Windows apps playlist where I cover more than 70 free applications combined to take your Windows experience to the next level. Either way, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.